Sorry, it's been a little <laughs> while. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Stop. Hello, everybody. Um, sorry, it's been a while. Um, but this is the continuation of our trip down the knee um, towards March. Yeah, and yeah. Um, well, a year ago. Yeah, and also it's a, a, a year ago, a few days ago now, but a year ago um, that I got my diagnosis of breast cancer. Um, that was quite an emotional day, actually. It really did take me by yeah, surprise. Pair, pair I weren't of... expecting it to be, but it, it really did. Well, you know me. It doesn't take a lot to set me <laughs> off. We had a few little teary moments. Yeah. Not as teary as the end of the James Bond film in the cinema, which was rather in, embarrassing. But I can't do any spoilers. There's no, no James Bond spoilers. No, we're not allowed spoilers. to say anything. But no, it did but make Mark cry. Yeah, me choking on my own snot bubbles in the cinema. That was the first. Embarrassing. Yeah, it was, yeah, for both of us. <laughs> But but all in all, I'm still here, fit and healthy, yeah. loving life. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, and, and uh, when we've said to other people about it, it's like, bloody hell, where's that year gone? I know. It is yeah. absolutely crazy. Yeah, so. it is. Yeah. So so onwards and upwards. Yeah, yeah. And we um, uh, this video starts with us at Ferry Meadows, Ferry Meadows Neen yeah. Valley Park. Now we've covered this in a couple of videos before when we've been there. So I'll put the link up there rather than go all over it again in this video. Yeah, but, you yeah. Know, uh, like I've said it before, you get enough repeats on TV with us, without us now about vloggers repeating journeys that we've done. Um, yeah, so we said goodbye to Cousin Billy Cousin anyway, Billy, he went off. Yeah, and um, grandkids. Yeah, and they came daughter for the and son-in-law come for a day and nearly broke me. <laughs> Who's not pedalling? Oh, give me a narrow boat any day. <laughs> Heap wind on a pedaler. That's better. Swap round. Young young blood in the engine room. Yeah, so um, as you can see, there's lots of activities um, at the Neen. What is it called? Neen? It's, it's the Neen Valley Park. Yeah, it's Orton Lake, Neen Valley Park. Yeah, there's loads we, to do. We call it Ferry Meadows. Yeah. It comes under many guises. You can, I'll see if I can put a link for it, um, for the website below. But there's loads of activities on the boating lake. You can hire pedalers as we did, um, canoes, paddle boards, um, loads of cycle routes. I was going to say the cycling routes yeah. and walking is, is yeah. just wonderful. Um, brick and steel barbecue areas dotted yeah. about. So you, you go along, take your charcoal and have a nice family barbecue. It yeah. really, really is a nice place. Yeah. Yeah, so we left there. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so we left there and started heading towards March Town, which would mean us leaving the River Neen and going on to the middle levels, which you go through Stand Ground Lock. Now, you have to book that 24 hours in advance. Yeah. Um, lock keeper's name is Tina. Book that. She'll be there on attendance. Um, she does all the lock f for you and let you through. If the Neen is in strong stream, which it wasn't, um, normally October and through the winter it's always in and out of strong stream you can't go through the lock um, yeah. the lock is closed until the water levels drop on the River Neen but obviously we had no problem no I mean if that does happen you've either got to stay at Ferry Meadows or more on the Riverside Moorings at Peterborough which aren't that bad no no, no. yeah so we got through Stand Ground Lock yep. onto the middle levels all non-eventful yep Headed on to um, Whittlesea Moorings. Where we hope to moor for the night. Yeah, yeah. and um, the infamous Brigitte Bend. Yeah, the, the bend that I made myself sick with worry the first time we ever hired a boat. Trying to find um, YouTube videos of people actually neg negotiating the bend. I've been told by people from the marina you can get a, a 60 by 12 foot boat round there. Wow. Or a seventy-foot narrowboat, 
ours are 60 foot and it is quite a quite a tight bean but i uh um, i mean i suppose you could with a little bit of to and fro it, it can be done i suppose yeah yeah, yeah. i wouldn't wouldn't want to attempt it in the wine no. bean then no well, what a wonderful wet morning it's been we're now coming up to uh Brig Brigate Bridgegate Bend Brigate Bend in Whittlesea very sharp right angle bend I've uh, been through this a couple of times first time in a 45 foot higher boat from Fox's Narrowboats so hopefully nothing will be coming around the corner nice long blast on the horn See if we can do this one without the bow thruster. I did cheat, add a little bit of bow thrustage there. Yeah, so it uh, seems to get easier every time. Um, no doubt next time through now I've said that I'll totally mess it up. And um, we're hoping to get on the Whittlesea visitor moorings. There's room for a couple of boats there. Um, so if they're full, unfortunately, we're going to have to go all the way through to uh, March, which is about another three, three hours. And it's forecast rain for the rest of the day. So, but it's bath night, so I'm due to get wet anyway, so never mind. I'm going to put the camera down because we've got a couple of more little bends and then hopefully we'll be at the moorings. Well, I've just seen ahead. I can see there's nobody on the moorings. Ashline Lock at Whittlesea. And uh, Deb has volunteered to do the um, paddles and they're very awkward. You have a different windlass for these. I think I'm gonna go give her a hand. Yeah, a little bit too tight to, for Deb. If you come onto the middle levels, you'll need a windlass um, like this. They actually call it a uh, um, middle level key. Um, you can buy them from the lock keeper at Stand Ground Lock and um, they fit into the top like that. Now the problem with these is if you are a woman, you tend to hit yourself in, in the boobs every time unless you get this big rocking motion going on. Let's wind this bad boy back. And uh, there's a park run going on in the park. <laughs> Deb just asked me if I want to do that. I don't think I'm going to have the energy once I've finished this. So uh, I'll put you guys down and carry on with this. Two rat dogs. And we've got a, a family of rats uh, just steering us out at the moment. We've got Bonnie and Alfie want to play. Bit of a result this one. Got the ship in behind me and all I've got to do is stagger down those steps to the boat. So we're back at March um, services point. We've got the sluice room over there, fresh drinking water and an out of order pump out machine. Yeah, so it's a bit of a sorry state of affairs if you want moorings in March. 
Um, the moorings, oh, my finger's not working. There it is, <laughs> it's having a lay in. Um, the moorings this side are, I would say, two to three inches deep in goose shit. Um, they were pretty bad two years ago when we came to the point I don't think anybody moors there anymore. So it would be nice if maybe once a month the council just come down here and shoveled all that in and washed it down um, to make those moorings usable. So we had the town moorings just under the bridge um, below the ship in pub. Fantastic little pub, I shall talk about that later. Um, you can get about four boats on there, 48 hour moorings. These moorings, as I said, nobody uses because they're so dirty. And the other end of town, the visitor moorings have actually collapsed. They collapsed about a year ago, I've been told. And um, no attempt to repair them. So a pretty sorry state, sorry state of affairs for boaters wanting to travel to March, visit March and moor up. Um, maybe Fenland District Council, if they see this video, um, would like to comment on it and what is, is being done to attract boaters. <laughs> right, so we're at Outwell Basin trying to turn round to moor. It's a little bit tight. Well, we got round. That is the tightest wind I've ever had to do. Good job I didn't buy that 70 foot boat. I made a nightmare. Story. He took out a notepad and wrote something for me. Then he kept walking on down the road, and I watched him disappear. Like smoke, and I thought I'd just seen a ghost. Then I looked down at what he wrote. It said, Son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind. Somebody at the tiller today, eldest grandson Maximus, and uh, I think he's a natural, he's took to it better than I did. He knows his left from his right and his right from his left and his starboard from his port. We've got some canoeists coming up and we'll see if we can miss those. So, how was your first night on the boat? I actually slept pretty well. And where, yeah. did, where did you sleep? I slept in the table but it folds into a bed. The dinette, yeah. Yeah, yeah it didn't actually sleep on the table. No. We're not that cruel. <laughs> it, enjoyed it that much. First thing this morning, after a little bit of dueling banjos on the guitar, <laughs> a message to mum to ask if he can stay again. And I think negotiations are underway. Yeah. Got 
That like Maximus? It's a white man's point for the answers, and you'll find what you've got. When you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind. ahead of me that way I'll turn the camera around in a minute um, we're now coming up to the collapsed uh, visitor moorings which is a bit of a shame because a uh, beautiful spot right next to the park especially if you've got dogs straight out of the boat and into the park yeah that's a shame that is um, considering now on the middle levels you now need um, a license to be on the middle levels we are been informed those moorings have been like that for about a year and we are now 6th of August 2021 um, so you'd like to think that plans are in place to get those um, renovated or repaired um, as soon as possible well we've got another natural at the tiller how old are you Malachi? Eight. eight years old tick over adult supervision he's got his life jacket on um, yeah, so all good. Tiller to me a little bit. Yeah. Tiller to me. Ah. A big pizza. A 13 inch pizza. 13 and a half inch pizza. Oh my God, whose is it? Is it all yours? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> good job I emptied the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, um, we had the boys stay with us. Highlight of our year, I think. It was the best ever. I was dreading it because obviously kids get bored, don't they? So you, you're not quite sure um, how it's going to pan out. But Maximus come the first time. Um, he stayed. He ended it's up staying insane. a couple of nights. <coughs> and then Malachi stayed one, one night. night. Um, um, and Litlin... Arcadian. Arcadian, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't want to stay. But he's only he had, seven. Yeah, he, had a, he just had a day day on the boat with us yeah, but he afterwards did. he said next time nanny and granddad i will stay, stay yeah but i've got a sneaky feeling next time it'll be the same yeah. he'll bottle <laughs> he at might, the end he but, might. No, but all all of them it was yeah they were pleasure. so good it was it was wonderful to have them just that that special sort of us time yeah, with yeah. them you, you just know. just worry because they're so full on at home they've got all their video games i mean you've seen um if you're a regular viewer you've seen footage of the garden they've got quad bikes they've got motorbikes uh the skate ramp is no longer there but they're they're always doing, doing stuff. something so, yeah, yeah we, we was like paranoid they're going to be bored but they absolutely loved yeah, it yeah loved absolutely it. yeah absolutely and they it. were like totally different kids yeah it was like it was like oh. all yeah yeah, yeah they've gone from these hyperactive hyperactive energetic energetic things to Oh, just yes. calm. It must, must it was be really, really must nice. Must be the calming effect of boat life. Yeah. yeah. So absolute pleasure. That was. For, for some reason, I don't know why. I can't find any um, footage of Litland. So I do apologise, Arcadian. Yeah. Granddad will get some footage next time and put you in. Well, the reason I'm grinning, I found something in a little shop today. Um, distinctive shape. These bottles, and they're from the uh, St Peter's Brewery first come across these that would be probably around about 2008 uh, country fair and I bought a case of their IPA and didn't like it it was a little bit too strong and hoppy for my palate love it now uh, today I come across their their citra beer never seen this one before so I thought I'd give it a try I've got my glasses on 4.7% uh, and I think they actually base this on their golden ale but then um, they've had the sort of citrusy, zesty aromas from the grapefruit. Um, let's get this open. Yeah, uh, the St. Peter's Brewery, that was started in 1996, a little craft brewery in Suffolk. Um, they've got their own borehole at the brewery premises, so all the water's been filtered through the chalk, um, so that's unique uh, to the area. And. Uh, 
I've, I've already got a comparison of what this is going to taste like in my head from another one of my favourite uh, Suffolk brewers. So if it's going to taste similar to that, I'll be well pleased and I could be uh, trying to track down uh, a case of this. So it's got a familiar smell. There we go. Now, I, I was going to say um, with the zesty aroma, it's going to taste like a ghost ship, but it it doesn't. It it borderline tastes that it's actually got a dash of lime in it. Um, that sort of classic lager and lime taste. It's not not nice. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know whether it would get a, a right nice pint from me. Um, I certainly wouldn't turn down a pint of it. And if I went into a pub and this was on, on tap, I would have one. But um, it doesn't quite cut it. I've actually bought um, one of their IPAs. So I'll give it a couple of days and I'll, uh, I'll put that to the test and see how we get on. But anyway, cheers, guys. Yeah, so it was a little bit gutted with that one yeah so it, it didn't make my right nice point but never mind uh this one is of course i shan't say what it is a bit predictable nowadays yeah. i was going to say guesses mm. <laughs> guesses on a postcard please. yes and on the subject of beer we had a meet up the other day uh long time uh viewers subscribers of ours um dave and fiona dave and fiona from Ottawa. from Ottawa, Canada, come all the way over just to bring me some beer. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. They didn't. No, they was. But they did bring beer. Yeah, yeah. And and, and oh yes, some handmade um, pens which they both had a part in making. Now, they are absolutely. I don't beautiful. know whether you can. I don't want to take it too close because it will probably go out of focus. They've they've made these and uh, what it is? It's a it's a curly. Um, is it curly maple? maple yeah. yeah, which has been um, stabilised with a pink resin. The, the pink because is of to, breast cancer. Um, yeah, uh, signify the breast, breast cancer. cancer. Yeah, and then it's uh, I forget what the wood the stripy wood was called. But but that was to so lovely off yeah the yeah. zebra wood yeah uh, zebra. to represent stripes and never never change your your stripes with your strength and your attitude. Yeah. And mine has a, a gunmetal finish on the metal of the, on the top, and Deb, and Deb has a gold. gold. Yeah, so awesome. they are yeah. absolutely yeah, lovely. Came in uh, beautiful little uh, gift boxes. Yeah. Yeah, so blown away with that. More importantly, <laughs> yes, yeah, some. Uh, Him and Dave did have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah, we we sat there in a in a pub, um, waffling on about beer like a couple of old farts. But um, this one, and he'd actually told me about this. Um, a few months back in one of his message messages. It's an o OPA, 6.8%. Um, I'm not going to say any more about it because these will um, feature in one of my yeah, beer, uh, review. beer reviews. And Don't Call Me Bitter, a classic um, English bitter. Again, um, Ottawa Microbrewery. So look forward to those um, in a future future beer review and so it was lovely it was, to see yeah, you yeah fantastic so absolutely meeting you guys. brilliant yeah. it was yeah, just lovely just wish we'd have met you earlier in your vacation over here and we maybe we could have met, it had been met a few up, times yeah met up a few times yeah, yeah 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 next time or may yeah next may when you come over it's, yeah it's a date yeah, yeah so cheers you guys cheers yeah so so um a big thank you to this week's um, channel supporters. Yeah, yeah. Over on uh, Patreon, we've got Keith and Helen Waybury and Janice Totham Davies. Yeah. I hope I've got that right, Janice. Yeah, put it in the comments below yeah. if we've got got it wrong. Over on PayPal, it's Stephen Brody. Stephen Brody. Cheers, Pleasure. buddy. Andrew Grimmett on Buy Me a Coffee, which I've edited as Buy Me a Drink. <laughs> And Michelle, Michelle C. C. And, and and I say I've said it over and over again. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but, but all the you. support we get from you yeah. people, we really really yeah, appreciate it so from the much. bottom of our heart. So thank you so so much. Yes, we do um, appreciate links it. Links for 
all of those patron paypal and buy me a coffee that's all in the description below as you know and just thank you and i think that's covered it all i don't think i've oh, missed any no i don't think so now so if if you enjoyed this little video press the like button if you haven't already subscribed the subscribe button if you want future notifications of any other videos we upload the bell icon can i drink those now no no oh right we've done the bell icon we have done and the bell keep icon. the comments coming yeah love your comments and we will see you see all you soon next week oh i'll see you tomorrow because i've got another video coming out with this little chap over there but see ya bye